Margaret, maid of Norway was a Norwegian princess who reigned as Queen of Scots from 1286 until her death. Her death while travelling to Scotland sparked off the disputed succession which led to the wars of Scottish independence. She was the daughter of King Eric II of Norway and Margaret, daughter of King Alexander III of Scotland. Margaret was born in Tar Nsberg. Her mother died in childbirth. Background When the treaty arranging the marriage of Margaret and Eric was signed at Roxburgh on July 25, 1281, Alexander III's younger son David had already died in June 1281, leaving the King of Scots with only one legitimate son, Alexander. Consequently, the treaty included a provision for the children of Margaret and Eric to succeed to the Kingdom of the Scots. If it happens that the King of Scotland dies without a lawful son, and any of his sons does not leave lawful issue, not sons and Margaret has children, not sons by the King of Norway, she and her children shall succeed to the King of Scotland. Or she, even if she is without children, according to Scottish law and custom. Alexander III made similar provisions when arranging the marriage of his son Alexander to Margaret, daughter of Guy de Dampit, Count of Flanders, probably also in 1281. The treaty arranging the marriage, signed in December 1281, included a lengthy and complex document setting out the customs and usages which determined the succession. As well as general statement of principles, the annex includes specific examples of the rights of A and M and their children in particular cases. The document, while confusing in places, appears to favor primogeniture for male heirs, or their descendants, and proximity of blood for female heirs and their descendants. The younger Alexander died on January 28, 1284, leaving only the king's granddaughter Margaret living out of his descendants. Alexander III summoned all thirteen earls of Scotland. 24 barons and the heads of the three main Gaelic kindreds of the West, Alexander of Argyll, Aenas Mar Cubdar of Islay and Alan Mikulari of Garmaran. At Schoon on February 5, 1284, the signatories agreed to recognize Margaret as domina and right heir if neither Alexander had left a posthumous child and the king had left no children at the time of his death. However, it is unlikely that this was intended to allow Margaret to rule alone as Queen Regnant, but rather jointly with her future spouse, whomever he might be. While unexceptional in the circumstances, this would appear to show that Alexander III had decided on remarriage. He did remarry, to Yolanda Dre, but died shortly afterwards as the result of an accident on March 19, 1286 without any children by her. Lady and right heir of Scotland, after King Alexander III was buried at Dunfermline Abbey on March 29, 1286, the magnates and clerics of the realm assembled at Schoon in Parliament to select the guardians of Scotland who would keep the kingdom for the right heir. At this time it was thought that Queen Yolande was pregnant, so that Margaret was not yet the obvious successor. It is uncertain what happened to Yolande's child. Most likely she had a miscarriage, although other accounts say that her child was still born at Clackmanan on St. Catherine's Day with the guardians in attendance to witness the event. Just possibly she had a false pregnancy, and there was even one dubious English claim that she was faking pregnancy. This, according to the oaths taken, made Margaret the heir at three years of age, but within weeks John Balliol tried to take the crown with the aid of John Cummin, the Red Cummin. The Bruce family captured strongholds in Galloway, and fighting in the name of the Maid of Norway, suppressed the rebellion with many important families like the Stuarts supporting them. In 1289, the Guardians maintained the peace in Scotland between the competing claims of Margaret, Robert Bruce and John Balliol. Far from the Scots displaying any desire to bring Margaret to Scotland, it was Margaret's father Eric who raised the question again. Eric sent official ambassadors to Edward I of England, then in Gascony, in May 1289, with papers referring to Margaret as Queen. Negotiations from this time onwards were between Edward who returned to England later in the year, and Eric, and excluded the Scots until Edward met with Robert Bruce and some of the Guardians at Salisbury in October 1289. The Scots were in a weak position since Edward and Eric could arrange Margaret's marriage to the future Edward II of England, or some other if they chose, without reference to the Guardians. Accordingly, the Guardians signed the Treaty of Salisbury, 
which agreed that Margaret would be sent to Scotland before November 1, 1290, and that any agreement on her future marriage would be deferred until she was in Scotland. That marriage of Edward, Prince of Wales, was in King Edward's mind is clear from the fact that a papal dispensation was received from Pope Nicholas for ten days after the treaty was signed. Thought to show bad faith on Edward's part, the papal bull did not contract a marriage, only permit one should the Scots later agree to it. Edward, like Eric, was now writing of Queen Margaret, anticipating her inauguration and the subsequent marriage to his son. Edward and the Guardians continued their negotiations, based on the collective assumption that Margaret would be Queen and the young Edward King, but all these plans, including those of King Alexander, were brought to nothing as Margaret died of the effects of sea sickness in the Orkney Islands on September 26, 1290 while voyaging to Scotland. Her remains were taken to Bergen and buried beside her mother in this stone wall, on the north side of the choir, in Christ's Kirk at Bergen. Her death left no obvious heir to the Scottish throne and the matter of succession was resolved in the great cause of 1291 a year or two. Although derived from a text written more than a century later, it is thought by some historians that the earliest Scots verse written in Scotland dates from this time. Cain Alexander Arkinch was deed, that Scotland lead in Lorch and La, away with sons of Alle and Breed, of Wine and Wax, of Gammon and Glare. Our gold was Changet into lead. Christ, born in Virginite, succour Scotland, and Raymond, that stayed is in perplexite. The ballad Sir Patrick Spence has sometimes been supposed to be connected to Margaret's ill-fated voyage. Some years later a woman appeared claiming to be her, known as the False Margaret. She was executed by Hoacom V, King Eric's brother and successor, in 1301. Status as monarch, as Margaret was never crowned or otherwise inaugurated, and never set foot on what was then Scots soil during her lifetime. There is some doubt about whether she should be regarded as a Queen of Scots. This could ultimately be a matter of interpretation. Most lists of the monarchs of Scotland do include her, but a few do not. Some contemporary documents, including the Treaty of Salisbury did describe her as Queen, but has been argued that she should not properly be considered a monarch. Due to lack of a clear historical precedent in Scotland's history as a fully separate country before the Union of the Crowns in 1603, there was only one occasion when a similar situation arose, that is on the death of the monarch the heir was outside the country and not available to be crowned more or less immediately. This was when, on the death of Robert III in 1406, his heir, who became James I, was a prisoner in England. James was eventually released and crowned in 1424. In the intervening period official documents simply referred to him as the heir, and the regent Albany issued coins in his own name. Nevertheless, James's reign is now usually considered to start in 1406, not 1424. If considered to have been monarch, Margaret is the first queen regnant within the British Isles. Ancestry Cultural references, Henry, Francis Mary, Quest for a Maid. Farah. Strauss and Giroux, 1988. ISBN 0-374-46155-4. In this book, Margaret survives and escapes to Scotland, where she eventually becomes an ordinary little girl, in an ordinary family, and is absorbed into ordinary Scottish culture. Brown, George Mackay. The Sea King's Daughter. Barnane Books. 1991. ISBN 1-872557-06-6. References. Bibliography, Crawford, Robert and Mickamich, The New Penguin Book of Scottish Verse. Penguin, London, 2001. ISBN 0-14-058711-X, Duncan, AAM, The Kingship of the Scots 842 Euro 1292. Succession and Independence. Edinburgh University Press, Edinburgh, 2002. ISBN 0 7486 8 Hunt, William. Margaret. In Sydney Lee. Dictionary of National Biography, 1901 Supplementary Euro. London, Smith, Elder and Company. MacDougall, Norman, 
L.A. Pamil Cosa La Fin Duke Shi Circular, Um Royal Monarcha Copyright in James Laidlaw The Old Alliance, France and Scotland Over 700 Years. Edinburgh University, Edinburgh, 1999. ISBN 0-9534945-0-0, Aram, Richard, The Canmore Kings, Kings and Queens of the Scots, 1040 Euro 1290. Tempus, Stroud, 2002. ISBN 0-7524-2325-8.